Regional Education Officer, Ms. Zalaika Jackie Soon, CEO of New Amsterdam Hospital, Mr. Colin Baino, Dr. Maida, Dr. Kira, Ms. Salka, the media, nurses, students, a pleasant good morning to you all. This morning, or this week, as a matter of fact, should be very significant in what, hap what will be happening in Ghana for the next four to five years. Permit me to use some numbers as indicated by some of the first speakers, some speakers before me. One person mentioned 222 patients, one mentioned 185. And if we take Barbies, population into con in consideration, which is just about 110,000 persons. We may say that we are doing very good as it relates to mental health. Because if out of 110,000 persons, we only have about 222 accessing mental health services. But I want to caution you right there. Right there is a myth that we are living with for a number of years. And that's made everything to correct. Mental health, as mentioned before, attracts stigma from all walks of life. Many persons see this facility and instead of saying the National Psychiatric Hospital, we refer to it as, you know what, the madhouse. So we ain't coming in the compound to access services. But let me break down the ratio a bit further. We have about, we had six persons at our table. There's now five. But it is possible that within those five persons, at least four of them are suffering from mental health issues. That's how serious it is in Guyana. And I don't want you to use the table as or the individual on the table as a person being referred to. But I just want to bring the numbers down very closely to you. Every four out of five persons at some point is suffering from mental health issues. And their health would continue to deteriorate if you do not, one, accept that there is an issue, and two, access services. We would have heard Mr. Bino very colorful, vociferous, and we also would have heard Dr. Kedar more medically inclined relaying to you what has transpired here in Region 6. Mr. Bino went as far as, far as trying to protect the integrity of Region 6 by highlighting the fact, and I said fact, that at least 85% of the inmates here are from regions out of our beloved East Barbies. 85%. So I've said two things. I have showed you, or I've said to you, and compared the population of Region 6 against the number of persons accessing mental health care in this region. I would have also highlighted to you the percentage of persons that are not from Region 6. But we need to be very careful on a day-to-day -day basis as we plan for mental health. I believe that whole approach to mental health has been very scary to the public. And we need to find an approach that will include all stakeholders, that bring communities together, bring residents of the communities together, working for this common good. Here at the psychiatric hospital, a number of these parents, these patients, sorry, are neglected by family members. They come, they access services. Dr. Maida treat them, they get better, they're on the period of observation. 
And when it's time to be discharged, the person that brought them don't want them back. So they left in the facility. While walking in this morning, I had this folder that I have nothing inside in my hand, as I usually do. And a patient. Uh, yeah, my, the, 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 this is my favorite patient. That is Terry. As soon as Terry sees me at the gate, Terry would run to me and pick up whatever I have in my hand and say he's my ADC. So if Terry can notice something in my hand and use the terms that he's my ADC, I think anyone you know what ADC is? Anybody? All right. To be more, to be more simplified, personal assistant. And whatever I have in my, in my hand is very important. And you want to protect the integrity of that. And he hold it and he clutched on his arms. And he walked beside me as I walked in. And he told the drummers, tone down now, tone down now. No. <laughs> Terry has been a resident here for as long as I know him. That's about seven, eight years I've known Terry been here. I don't know if it's more, more than that, Miss Salcom. Longer than that. But the problem is that when they were brought to the institution, yes, they had a problem. They were treated, they were cared for. But because they remain in the same environment for a number of years, one will figure or assume that they're at that same level. What we need to do in Ghana is to ensure that there's an approach, there's a strategy in place to ensure that there's a life, there's after treatment, that these persons can be reintegrated in society. I recall also a patient of this institution that worked on a day-to-day -day basis while being here at the pharmacy barn. He helped with packing, packing stuff in the barn. Is he still around? We also have an engineer that can fix things around here better than any one of my handy, one of my handy men. But none of the parents have that trust that they are better and they can be reintegrated into a regular life on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm here because one, I understand that issue. And I know the team here understand that issue also. We, I would have spoken to the administrators here and also Dr. Kedar. And we need to coin that approach or coin that strategy, whereas patients have an alternative after treatment. If it means coercing the government in constructing one halfway homes, and then to ensure that the rehabilitation continues. That is what will be done. This facility sometimes is usually neglected. I recall when I first took office here in the region, I was told by the highest authority in the region that one, this facility isn't the responsibility of us here in the region, but central government. That's something that I rubbished as nonsense. Because as far as I'm concerned, once it's here, it's here in the region, it is our concern. And previously, when we budget for activities and estimates for works to be done in this region, there's only minor inputs for the National Psychiatric Hospital in our estimates. I'm pleased to tell you right now that although there is plans in having the facility move from where it is right now to another area in New Amsterdam, in, well, in Barbies. <laughs> in Barbies. The 2017 budget estimates for health services would have included works 
and upgrading of this present facility. Here in this region, we cannot deny the commitment or we cannot shy away from the commitment that staff shows on a day-to-day basis here. So at this moment, I want to congratulate all the staff members of this facility and also encourage them to continue striving because your efforts will not be in vain. And we note on a day-to-day -day basis your contribution towards the development of this facility. I know some days it can be very, very hard. But we're here today, and I've seen you march down the road in the sweltering heat, looking very lovely, of course, in that case, our choice of color, purple. Portray your commitment towards the cause. And that is improving the day-to-day -day lives of the persons you come into contact with. It is very hard many days knowing that so much is needed for the facility. But because of policies and uncertainties, previous uncertainties, it cannot be done on a, day to, or, or a timely basis. But like I said, 2017, which is just about two and a half months away, or some would say about eight days. Well, who's counting, huh? 2017 budget once approved in its entirety, which would have already received the blessings of the very key ministries, the important ministries. It is our hope that cabinet and parliament sees it the same way and approve health services budget in its entirety of 2017. Once that is done, a number of things or aspects of your day to day lives here will be improved immediately. At the moment, there are 35 psychiatric patient care assistants being trained. They are on the closing, closing part of their training. These persons will add to the day to day basis the running of this facility. We are also trying to find attractive ways of attracting men to work in, this facility, in these facilities. Yeah, I know, salary. Salary is, salary is the major factor there. Because the man is saying, if I stay home and find a, you know, bits and end job as a laborer, I may be paid $4,500 to $5,000 a day. If I come to work here, I won't be realizing that money on a day or in a day. So we understand that. And because we know that there's a need for men and there's a need to enhance the livelihood of all the persons that care, all the persons that are committed to the cause, I'm quite certain that in 2017, salaries for nursing staff will be on the increase. And if I say that, because I know. But I know I'm not permitted. Mr. Bino, am I permitted? <laughs> Although I'm tempted, I'm not permitted to tell you or to say, because you know we have the media here, eh? and it might go very fast. And then I might receive a call from very high authority. I said, Mr. Steve, why are you preempting the inevitable? But I know the percentage. I'm certain about, about it. And there will be an increase, a handsome increase. You know, if you keep calling numbers, I might whistle. And I know, very, I know how to whistle. So you can try me. And if I start whistling, maybe I is it. And then nobody can quote me as saying, Miss Stephen did say that. Right? So. They are efforts and stream to ensure that the persons that care, nurses, nurses, more emphasis is paid. I usually say that you don't wake up one morning and decide you want to be a nurse. You might go to class, you might graduate. You may have 
the academic qualification or have academic teaching of a nurse, but that compassion within that enables you to care more than self or beyond the call of duty cannot be taught to anyone in the classroom. It has to be something that comes from deep within. I'm very proud of the nurses that we have at the moment. Because I know, I know some days when things go wrong in the wards, on a day shift, and a night shift person call in to see how things went, and they're hey, we had a disturbance. That person didn't come into work in the night. And then the risk allowance is ridiculous that we, that we pay in these, these folks. It is very hard. As a director, I have never, while there was need to talk to nurses, trying to talk to them about attitude and discipline, you know, it's very hard to do it knowing all of their circumstances, what they're working with, what they're up against. But I'm very happy that these same persons stood by it, keep sticking by it, and the onus will be on us as administrators to ensure that these very persons smile brightly in 2017. The environment of mental health, while not always conducive, while there is stigma attached to it, I believe as one person said to me this morning, where is he? A tall guy, not so be Mr. Bradford. Now he's coming into the compound after he needs, but after many years. <laughs> and the transformation that he has seen, what is evident. So I ask him to be cautious. The transformation, yes, is evident, but there's still a lot more that needs to be done. A lot more that will be done. You know, Ms. Biden talked about suicides, and the 222, Ms. June Van Kennick, is what um, Dr. Kedar mentioned about the suicide. I, I don't get back to you. I know you, you, you seem perplexed when I mentioned two numbers, but I was waiting to get back to you. And I recall the president of Ghana saying, happy people don't commit suicide. I also know hungry people are angry people. I know if I stay here longer on this podium, I may have hungry people, right? And then you become angry after being hungry, right? And then you're unhappy. And it can lead to other things. So I won't stay too long. Because if I start talking about suicide, it will be from one thing to the next thing. Cause some of the pastors to be blamed. That's preached too long. All right? But ladies and gentlemen, while we're all here today with smiles on our faces, because we want to acknowledge that mental health is part of our day-to-day -day lives, and we want to show emphasis that we as residents of this region, we as healthcare providers, we as stakeholders, Ministry of Education represented here today, we all need to come together and ensure our communities, our villages are stronger. UNICEF had a saying that it takes a village to raise a child, and that child will grow to adult and, you know, it escalates. But I've seen the fabrics of communities here in Region 6 has deteriorated. Mr. Biden don't like people saying the church alone should be blamed. I'm not saying that either. But when I say the fabrics of the community, I'm talking about the schools, I'm talking about the churches, I'm talking about the little bottom house meetings, the family meetings, the entire family set up. At once these things are working effectively, it will enhance the health of this region immensely. So in closing, I want to urge you I want to urge us to ensure we value the things that are necessary and show support to those things that we say we value. 
I remember mental health is not only about when the person reach here at this facility. It's about everything you do on a daily basis. Dece simple decision making or decision to be made can put you in a state of depression, anxiety, finances. All these things are factors that are leading up to a person being, con being considered mentally unstable. So we need to check all these things in our day-to-day -day lives. I heard Mr. Bynum mention about tinted cars, but you know, Mr. Bynum's throwing a lot of shade. Tinted cars, while well, have its disadvantages, there's some use for it at, at some times, like transporting medication and so on, so that sunlight doesn't get, you know, to the boxes. I don't like person trying to anticipate what I'm about to say. No? So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for marching. I had, I had asked the organizers not to, prom to plan more marches for reasons. So that's why this morning I joined the march right over there. Right over there. And if, if any other department plan another march for this year, it may not be funded. All right? It may not be funded. But I like the idea to get the entire tongue involved, seeing you coming through shouting and chanting and showing your commitment towards mental health. For that, I applaud you guys. And I'm excluding myself, I did march. And also, Lord Kedari said, enhance your physical attributions or capability. I have other ways of ensuring I'm physically fit. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. And please ensure, as we check our day-to-day -day lives, and ensure that men, we think about mental health and we understand what is mental health. Something is very, very difficult to understand. Because not just about being here and con being considered mad or mentally unstable. It's about every single thing you do. But how you plan your day, how you make your decisions, all these things have a swirl effect to bring back right here. And my attempt in 2017 is to increase the population, to decrease, oh sorry, increase the staff and decrease the population. Decrease the population of the patients while increasing the staff. So, thank you.